The Atlanta Falcons' moves this offseason have been all over the map. Right now, the team's fans and NFL analysts are tearing them apart for making some unconventional and contradicting moves in free agency and at the NFL draft. First, they signed Kirk Cousins to a lucrative four-year contract worth $180 million, $100 million guaranteed. It seemed that by signing a veteran quarterback in Kirk Cousins to a four-year deal, they were all set to compete for the NFC South title, the weakest division in football. With the team's defense being their strength, the Falcons have been investing heavily in offense at the top of the draft for years now and presumably just needed a reliable quarterback to catapult them into a playoff contender. In the past three seasons leading to this year's draft, they invested in skill position players with top 10 picks including Kyle Pitts, a tight end, Drake London, a receiver, and B. John Robinson, a running back. Excitement was looming as the Falcons headed to the draft with the eighth overall pick and the quarterback position already set in stone. The options to further improve their roster seemed plentiful. Either they could draft Dallas Turner, the top edge rusher available to further bolster their defense, or they could draft receiver Roma Dunze to give Kirk Cousins even more young firepower to work with. Instead, they shocked the world by drafting Michael Penix Jr., a quarterback who'll be 24 years old by the start of the season to back up Cousins. Apparently, Cousins, who just signed with Atlanta, was as surprised as everybody to see the decisions because the Falcons reportedly never informed him about their unconventional plan. Penix undoubtedly has loads of talent, and and even though it could be argued that it was a reach taking him at eighth overall, the pick could be justified for a team needing a quarterback. Penix has elite arm strength for a prospect and is already very refined as a prospect after spending five years developing in college, albeit with some concerning injuries along the way. But over the past two seasons, it could be argued that Penix was the best quarterback in the entire nation playing at the University of Washington. I mean, the dude threw for almost 5,000 yards and 36 touchdowns in his senior season alone. And new head coach Raheem Morris and his staff absolutely love him as a prospect. So reaching for who you believe is the best player available is usually a plausible strategy under most circumstances. However, the Falcons didn't seem like they needed a quarterback anymore and now have a guy who was labeled as one of the more game-ready prospects pegged into a backup role for the foreseeable future. While the Falcons are getting plenty of criticism for their peculiar pick, we've dissected it a little deeper and are beginning to believe it makes plenty of sense. Both quarterbacks' contract structures indicate that the Falcons are building for stability in the future and have a long-term plan in place that they just have to execute. There's no question that the quarterback position is the most important position in all of football and that it's been the Falcons' weakness since Matt Ryan was in the prime of his career. Now, all of a sudden, it becomes a position of strength for the franchise. Not only do they have Cousins locked in as their starter, they have a star prospect backing him up. Cousins, as a star veteran with a reputation for being a great teammate, makes him an ideal mentor for Penix as he learns the ropes of the NFL. You can only imagine that backing up and learning from Cousins will benefit Penix immensely. But how long can we expect this dynamic to last? As mentioned, Penix is already 24 years old, so he's far from a young prospect. The Falcons could have drafted 21-year-old J.J. McCarthy, which would have made more sense from a timeline perspective. But if the Falcons believe that Penix is the more talented prospect long-term, age really shouldn't be a factor. There's clearly an opportunity to build a strong team and win a Super Bowl during the five-season window if you have a young star quarterback on a rookie contract, but often rookie quarterbacks never pan out, even the highly touted ones. The Falcons have a plan in place to groom Penix as their guy over a number of years. Patrick Mahomes clearly benefited from backing up Alex Smith during his rookie season in Kansas City, and the Packers have been the best quarterback system for decades by grooming Aaron Rodgers behind Brett Favre for three seasons before giving him the starting role, then giving Jordan Love two years of development behind Rodgers before thrusting him into the starting role. Clearly, this is the Falcons' plan for Penix, who's going to be playing behind Cousins for the foreseeable future. But when will he get his chance as a starter? Well, it's pretty obvious, barring injury, what the Falcons' ideal plan is if both quarterbacks play to their potential. Based on the structure of Cousins' contract, he's all but guaranteed to get two years with the Falcons. However, year three of his deal will likely be the first season that Penix gets ample opportunity to take the job, unless Cousins proves to be elite in the two years leading up to that. This is because the Falcons have three seasons to decide if they want to exercise the fifth-year option on Penix's rookie contract. That means that Penix will start to get looks as an overdeveloped, talented quarterback at age 27, and if he proves it, will become the starter for the 2027 season. By that time, the Falcons will have the option of releasing Cousins from his contract and only taking on $12.5 million in dead cap. 
It's not ideal, but considering the circumstances, the Falcons will have plenty of cap flexibility with Penix as a 28-year-old still on his rookie contract. Under these conditions, the Falcons would still have less than $20 million essentially committed to the quarterback position, depending on who they roster as a backup. Then, in Penix's fifth season, he'll still be on his rookie deal and Cousins' contract will be entirely off the books. While the strategy is quite unorthodox, the only team that has used it with conviction in the past is the Packers, and to say it's worked for them would be an understatement. They're the gold standard for quarterback development. Even though it seems like a waste of a pick to use such a high pick on Penix, the Falcons clearly believe in stability and rebuilding patiently and properly. Instead of thrusting him into a role due to necessity, they'll enjoy the luxury of developing him slowly behind a star veteran and forcing him to earn his way into the starting lineup. Yes, Penix will be old when he finally earns a starting role, but he should still have plenty of years to enjoy a long career with the Falcons while he's still in his athletic prime. And the Falcons are making a decision to not be short-sighted in pursuit of success, but instead build for now while making a big investment into the team's long-term health. Only time will tell if the Falcons' strategy of building for the now while also prioritizing the future pays off, but if it does, we could be looking at a franchise with quarterback stability long-term. And who knows? Maybe after copying the Packers with success, it'll change the way other teams draft and develop quarterbacks in the future. But we want to know what you guys think. Could the Falcons actually be onto something by drafting Penix and patiently developing him behind a star like Cousins? Or did they waste a pick that could have been used to further bolster their lineup immediately? Let us know what you think in the comments section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more sports news and insights. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.